to the last session of this five days uh, online training program on livelihood enhancement for rural youths of Tripura. And um, I'm so happy to have uh, uh, Dr. Aurobindo Mohato as a resource person here. Uh, there is a special reason why uh, I'm happy. It's not that he is my colleague. It's not that he belongs to the rural development fraternity or so. It is because uh, the first technical session started with an alumni of Bishwa Bharati, and the last technical session is also by an alumni of Bishwa Bharati University, which is my alma mater. So obviously, that gives me an additional happiness, and uh, that is why, why when Aurobindo suggested that um, he wants a session on 16, so I just initially dis uh, instantly decided that that will be the last session so that we can wind up with Vishwa Bharati. And there is a particular reason why I, I chose Vishwa Bharati. It's maybe you have understood by now, particularly in the backdrop of Rajasa's lecture yesterday. The concept of rural reconstruction formally in India started in Vishwa Bharati and it was Rabindranath Chakur. Okay, we all acknowledge him for his writings. We acknowledge him for his creations for being a celebrated poet, being for being the first um, Nobel laureate from India, for being Vishwakobi, for being Gurudev, but he is Gurudev more so because of his contribution to society, because of his contribution to humanity, because of his contribution to the common man. And his contribution to common man uh, increased manifold by his ideas about rural reconstruction. And uh, whether it's your Rajesh sir, whether it's your Aurobindo sir, whether it was Shinmoy sir in the earlier session, as well as Aurup sir, they are all, they were and they are, I believe, still associated with the ideas generated by Rabindranath Thakur in his, through his uh, um, rural reconstruction program, which started a hundred years back. So it is in this backdrop, I welcome Dr. Aurobindo Mahato, the head of the Department of Rural Studies, Department of Tripura University, who is going to speak on environment and its uh, relationship with the livelihood efforts in the backdrop of rural areas, be it Tripura, be it the other northwestern region, as well as other parts of the country. Aurobindo has wide exposure. Uh, before coming to academics, he was a full professional in this field. So obviously, he has the theoretical as well as the uh, field experiences, and I feel uh, it would be wonderful to have him uh, sharing his experiences and sharing his thoughts and uh, giving you insights for uh, contributing to the society, contributing to your locality, contributing to the state, and of course contributing towards the country so as to make the world a better place. Aurobindo, welcome Thank you. and uh, best wishes. Uh, as you, I have nothing more to say. Only thing is, uh, they are all your students, so you know them as I know them. So the stage is all yours. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity, and it's really a topic uh, which is from come from score of my heart, and uh, I'm really proud that Department of Economics has taken this initiative to organize uh, the topic and always it has been most of the time economists feel that livelihood is a topic of rural development or development sector. Uh, but I personally feel that at the level of microeconomy, it has always a uh, very good relationship with economy. And accordingly, I'll uh, give my presentation or in this topic highlight on this uh, basis. So uh, I've basically, first, uh, I would like to little bit discuss about the concept uh, of uh, uh, environment and uh, rural development livelihood. And then later on in the last stage of that, we'll give some practical exams, which I have been gone through in the various uh, field of uh, environment friendly rural livelihood and which has been established in our country in various parts. Most, uh, most of the time I work in uh, Hyderabad where there is a rural technology park. So many environment friendly technologies has been set up under um, uh, guidance of our expertise. And those are running still in a very, uh, very well mode. And it has given a boost to the rural livelihood and economic sector of the 
development field another way uh, in uh, various technologies which are, we are looking uh, now we are able to see here in tripura or any other uh, ngo base these are also comes from this type of various technologies which are developed for rural development for the livelihood expecting the uh, slide you are able to see can anyone respond yes it is visible yeah okay so uh, first uh, i would like to uh, give you a little glimpse about the what is evndp report source that environment friendly and government's rural development schemes will have a positive economic impact because of environment friendly will be so why i am highlighting again and again environment because whatever the economic initiatives are taken up this cannot be uh, uh, sustainable or long term benefit uh, one way the development will go and people again have to come back to the rural area or the field of environment such uh, if if we could see the uh, recent development on the climate change the copenhagen now they are they are organizing the 12th copenhagen uh, seminar on climate change so now uh, why they are organizing in 2022 again uh, the climate change seminar and workshop where they are talking about the whole international world is talking about that is called your rear your water your land your forest and, and the absolutely the uh, water so this this five component which india is talking about the from long time back the whole indian traditional system of development is basically based on this five component but uh, uh, international world is looking into it last 10 years we could say 10 to 15 years the climate change conference carbon credit things have came but when your practices are not according to the environment when our practices of development economic growth is not at par with the environment and the development the development which achieve the achieve for the benefit of the human that benefits goes down in the same way we are seeing now the corona pandemic but the people have again started to build their good oxygen environment uh, breathing capacity uh, building health Uh, if th there is a high polluted area then there the chances of probability of immunity is very less and people can die so whatever the assets we have created if it is not connected with environment if it is not connected to the root of nature then automatically it is not going to give the development so evndp has also suggested in that way the development economic development has to be in the base of your natural or natural status of the country so in that way uh, uh, sharing this we cannot forget that uh, the mahatma gandhi india lives in the its village so that's what he says ki when we are talking about the development of india now we have to think about in the rural area most of the rural area because most of the portion around 60% now india lives in the rural area so this population are the major chunk of uh, our country's population about this development if take place then a whole country can the develop in this way so a rural development we know it's a process of improving the quality of life and economic well being of people living in rural area often relatively isolated and sparsely populated uh, all of you are comfortable in english or shall i mix bengali also जल वायु आकाश भूमि डेभलपमेंटिटी and that that's why the sustainable development or sustainable economic development or environment friendly uh, livelihood opportunities are coming in front face and the rural development it amra age bolchi jemon process of 
ইম্প্রুভিং দ্য কোয়ালিটি অফ লাইফ মানুষের জীবনের কোয়ালিটিটা কিভাবে বাড়ানো যাবে ইকোনমিক ওয়েলবিং কিভাবে হবে পিপল লিভিং ইন রুরাল এরিয়াস অফেন রিলেটিভলি আইসোলেটেড আর স্পেশালি পপুলেটেড এরিয়া পপুলেটেড এরিয়ার মধ্যে থেকে বাইরে থাকে কিন্তু এখানে যতক্ষণ না ডেভেলপমেন্টটা হবে ততক্ষণ রিয়েল ডেভেলপমেন্টের ছোঁয়া তারা পাবে না সো দিস আর দ্য ফিউ কম্পোনেন্ট আমরা একটা রুরাল ডেভেলপমেন্টের একটা মডেল এখানে দেখছি মানে কিভাবে ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড অফ রুরাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট ভারতবর্ষে নিয়ে আসা হয়েছে কেন রুরাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট ইম্পর্টেন্ট একত্রিত করে কমিউনিটির উন্নয়নের জন্য কাজ করা দ্যাট ডাজেন্ট মিট অনলি দ্য রোড বিল্ডিং ইনফ্রাস্ট্রাকচার ইফ পিপল আর নট এবল টু ডেভেলপ or improve their quality of life inside home and outside the home then the development is not taken place so rural development a community ke mix kore community madhyame development ta hok tar approach 1952 te newa hoychilo ebong etar pechone ekta khub sundor ghotona ghotechilo seta hocche keno ei community development approach ta bharatborsh e eschilo jawaharlal nehru ekbar amra sobai jani onar bari প্রয়াগ যেটা কিছুদিন আগে এলাহাবাদ নামে পরিচিত ছিল তো প্রয়াগ প্রায় থেকে যখন উনি যাচ্ছিলেন দিল্লি বাই কার সে সময় কারে যেতে হতো অনেকটা ফ্লাইটের অপশন না থাকার সময় মাঝে মধ্যে উনি যেতেন তো কারে যাওয়ার সময় উনি দেখলেন কি রাস্তার ধারে মেন হাইওয়ের ধারে একটা রাস্তা তৈরি হচ্ছে কানেকটিভিটি অফ রোড যে রোড কানেকটিভিটিটার জন্য প্রচুর লেবার কাজ করছে প্রায় একশোটা লেবার কাজ করছে ভিটামিন পিচ চলছে ফায়ার আছে many people are working there so he felt as a prime minister uh, it's a, a very proud feeling karon you know, amra jani sadhinatar age porjonto kono jodi gramer rasta nirman korte hoto tahole seta gramer lokerai korto british sarkar kono din gramer rasta baniye dite aseni uh, ingrejrao tar age aseni ar tar ageo uh, kono raja maharajar samoy gramer rasta nirmaner concept ta shanti niketone prothom rabindranath thakur jeta স্বাধীন হলো এবং দেশের অর্থনৈতিক অবস্থার মাধ্যমে গ্রামের কানেকটিভিটি তৈরি হবে তখন গভর্নমেন্ট রাস্তা তৈরি করে দিতে লাগলো তো এজ এ প্রাইম মিনিস্টার জওয়াহরলাল নেহরু খুবই প্রাউড ফিল করছিলেন কি আমাদের গ্রামের রাস্তা আজকে এত এত লেবার কাজ করছে আর গ্রামের রাস্তা পিচ দিয়ে তৈরি হচ্ছে সো হি স্ট্যান্ড আপ দেয়ার একটু দাঁড়িয়ে কাজটা দেখার তার ইচ্ছে হলো মনে এবং উনি ওখানে দাঁড়ালেন তো জিজ্ঞেস করলেন গ্রামে যারা কাজ করছে তারা কোথা থেকে এসছে কোথায় বাড়ি তো প্রতিটা ব্যক্তি প্রায় এখান থেকে পাঁচ কিলোমিটার ছ কিলোমিটার দূরের থেকে এসছে কন্ট্রাক্টর একজন বাইরের সমস্ত কিন্তু হি ওয়াজ সারপ্রাইজ কি গ্রামের একটা লোক ওখানে অ্যাভেলেবেল নয় তাহলে যে রাস্তাটা মানুষ কিছুদিন আগে পর্যন্ত মানে ফর্টি সেভেন এ স্বাধীন হয়েছে এর ঘটনা আমি বলছি যে যে রাস্তাটা তৈরি করার জন্য মানুষ নিজে পাথর নিয়ে যেত নিজে শ্রমদান করত নিজে রিসোর্সেস কালেক্ট করত আজকে সরকার করে দিচ্ছে অথচ সেই রাস্তাটার প্রতি তাদের কোনো ইন্টারেস্ট নেই ইভেন একটু দেখতে আসারও ইচ্ছে জাগেনি কেন সো দ্যাট ওয়াজ দ্য কোয়েশ্চেন সো হি ওয়েন্ট ব্যাক অ্যান্ড প্ল্যানিং কমিশন তারপরে সেটা হলো অ্যান্ড এভরি প্রসেসে কমিউনিটি যাতে ইনভলভ হতে পারে তার প্রসেস ঠিক করলেন তার জন্য এই কমিউনিটি প্রজেক্ট অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন ওয়াজ সেট আপ under the planning commission 1952 te ei ghotona uh, has taken an important role to set up is this community project because rasta toiri hok ba jai hok community jodi involved na thake tahole ei development er ultimately kono mane hoy na jeta 2nd october october 2nd 1952 important landmark in the history karona this programs underwent many changes and was handled by different ministry kam mane rural development korte alada kono ministry noy various department etate stakeholder hobe ei bhabe eta kaaj cholchilo now it has gone on 1974 another benchmark department of rural development came into existence as a part of ministry of food and agriculture on 18th august 1979 the department of rural development was given elevated to the status of new ministry of rural development rural reconstruction to ei bhabe etar progress hote shuru kore and 
July 1991, in 1991, the department was upgraded as Ministry of Rural Development. So, the rural it has taken a long term. And we know that 1992 Te Tarpore Panchayati Raj Act, 1993 the Panchayati Raj, 73rd Amendment and 74th Amendment Ase, Jekane Manuser Hate Power, Devar Kotha Bolahai, Jeta, Mahatma Gandhi, 1909, Uniso Noi Sale, Hind Saraj Boy Likhechilan, Ki Gota Bharat Borse, Manuser Hate, Nijer Hate Komotas Tahwe, Tar Rasta Torihawe, Natar Badi Torihawe, Najoler Babostawe, Kihawe. It will be decided by the people of that area, not the central government or the state government or some BDO, some IS officer or some DM will decide Ki one road has to be constructed. But it was very unfortunate that it has taken around 50 years to uh, recapture the concept which was, which was Mahatma Gandhi has given in 1909 when he was traveling from South Africa. That time he wrote a small book and that is Hind Swaraj. So it has taken a long time, uh, but doesn't mean ki it has uh, it has uh, forget its the original nature. Still, there is many way to go. Still, the Panchayati Raj had to be modified in other way and how it it can capture the actual need of rural development. And that we absolutely would like to say that it's a still there are many top down approaches are there. Uh, there is a bottom up approach is as less. So how this uh, top down approach works, it's a requirement, uh, design, implementation, verification and maintenance, how it is happening, the uh, decided by the uh, top level, the central government or the BDO or the DM level and they plan and design, implement and verify and maintain it. Suppose road, school building and other things. And the bottom up approach, the people at the grassroots level, you could see the huge crowd, they're deciding at the second level. The multi-stage level, this is called, and then third level, then fourth level, it goes to decide. And there is also not a single man. Everywhere there is some committee which decide ki what kind of road or schools or anything can be happened. This is basically the concept of bottom-up approach. The decision goes from ground to top. Now I am entering in the concept of uh, livelihood. So for this development, there is an important component is economic aspiration or economic development. So before entering to economic space, there is a space of basic need fulfillment. And that basically the, the capabilities, the assets, the store resource claims and as access and activities required for strengthening the means of living. So we can think about the double floor building. We can think about a car, but first I have to think about a rural people has to think about what the food he can get. What are the means of living everyday need of living? He is available. So Robert Chamber has identified these five component for this livelihood. Uh, first, a person need a assets, um, a means of uh, living. A livelihood is sustainable, which can cope with and recover from the stress and shock, maintain or enhance its capabilities and assets. So uh, also he's talk about the shock, suppose medical, some stress related to kids education, some stress related to uh, rainfall uh, due to agriculture dependency and provide sustainable livelihood opportunities for the next generation and which contributes net benefit to other livelihoods at local and global level and in the long and short term. So this uh, identified by the Robert Chamber, though these are the various factors uh, of India where people were always thinking about the livelihood, never people were more focused on the economic asset creation. So uh, this, uh, this concept of asset creation and uh, big uh, venture has came in a later on part, basically the after the British era, most of the people, a few people always were there who reach or the, those who are king, they had an asset, but most of the people were believe on sustainability of their livelihood, basic food, basic shelter, uh, basic amenities required, uh, those were limited for their development aspects were this. Ekhan theke beriye manushke jokhon sustainable development er kotha bolchi, tokhon concept er clearation dorkar. Now, amra uh, what we think about the 
suppose we are talking about the growth, we are talking about the development and sustainable development. So when we're talking about the growth and basically the economic growth, that economic growth uh, is another part and efficiency and competitiveness, the middle one, if you say sustainable development, combination of society, economy and environment and growth is only the economic growth defines. So uh, uh, middle part, that economic growth, efficiency and competitiveness, flexibility and stability, production, consumption, employment, and international trade. And that when we mix the society and economy, that welfare, equal opportunity, social cohesiveness, international solidarity, maintenance of human capital, then it comes under development. But when we are combining this society, economy, and environment, three of, three of them, then the consumption of resources, how much we are able to consume the resource available, kotota resource bavar korbo, material kotota, waste kotota hove, risk kotota ache, rate of change, rainfall rate change, uh, temperature change, natural and capital landscape kirokom, seta ke monereke jokon economy or society development kotha bolbo, then it is called sustainable development. Then sustainable development ter angle theke jodi ami eta ke livelihood. Livelihood is basic about the sustainable uh, development component. Then it's a rural development is a basic all of uh, Penta uh, diagram. It's human capital, physical capital, and financial capital, social capital, and natural capital. A pastor combination here, rural uh, livelihood, a Pentagon developer. Now, a pastor component, what achieve you achieve? Now, to achieve this, and why to achieve this? Because of vulnerability context. Socks, trains, sir, and seasonal Hello? Sir, sir, can I interrupt you for a while? Yes, please. Sir, I can see only the first slide from my end. Shabai ki tai? Actually, tai to, tumi ki slide shift ko chho? Haan, onik bulo shift ko chho. To me, at a catch cover, Arvind, a passage scroll jet as an a sheet at a click coro when you are shifting. Ha, Ibatulis, a concept of environment friendly. A chabolo screen as chenatale. No, Tami Agbert slide glue that a chita lever. Ha, concept. At a bottom up approach, get a lower level a decide or che. And top level a jatche. Or it is a top level a decide of che, bottom a jatche. Or I mean, it are kotha bolchilam, get a growth development or sustainable development. Get a society and economy jokon kotha bolchi, then it is a development. And jokon only economic ker kotha bolchi, tokon it comes under growth. And when society and economy and environment combination hoche, then it comes under sustainable development. Now I'm talking about the uh, the livelihood pentagon. Livelihood pentagon basically based on this human capital, physical capital, financial capital, social capital, and natural capital. A pasta mix kore livelihood and pentagon gotan kora hoche and jeta basically environment er upor base kore toiri. Now eta kibhabe eshe the sustainable livelihood approach kibhabe eshe the vulnerability context er upor eshe vulnerability context ki ki socks trends and seasonality so socks what kind of socks suppose uh, there is a uh, some people in your house suddenly get ill and they need a high kind of medical expenditure so it's a sock for a rural people now trends uh, the trends are uh, going on the uh, uh, change, sudden trends. Suppose the agriculture crop, the Joar, Bajra, we know it once upon a time it was very popular. So suddenly the uh, change and people have shifted towards the wheat, wheat and rice. So uh, the trends has changed and the people have left the Joar, Bajra and things or um, Bhutta for their uh, daily, daily routine food. So suddenly trends has changed and people, those who are cultivating this Joar, Bajra or uh, corn, they get a sock. So again, the seasonality, it depends on rainfall, the what kind of crop they will be able to produce, what type of rural product can they can produce, what is the connectivity to the urban area, to the selling point of their products. It's everything depends on seasonality. So these five 
uh, the which we talked about the last slide that's uh, livelihood pentagon it this livelihood pentagon is basically attacked by the vulnerability context and these five components have started to work towards to to absorb this vulnerability context and these five livelihood pentagons these are basically livelihood assets so how to utilize these assets in a proper manner this vulnerability context can be achieved or triggered up eta ke kibhabe vulnerability context theke beri asa jabe tar jonno ki ki kaj kore tar jonno there is a need of some policy and programs ki ki royeche amader kache policies macro economic policies सेक्टरल एप्रोच अफ डेवलपमेंट मैं कौन सेक्टर फोकस आज एग्रिकलर सेक्टर अदार सेक्टर उंग और साम कईंड अफ सेक्टर एंड इन्स्टीट्यूशन सपोज की आईन रही है कथाय मार्केट एभेलेबल रही है सोशल रिलेशन कैम आज कस्टम्स कम आज एंड प्रसेस डिसेंट्रलेशन आना पार्टिसिपेशन आना मार्केट लिबारेलेशन आना डिसेंट्रलेशन बोलते लास्ट सैटारडे बोझा बटम टू टप एप्रोच जनगण सिद्धांत जाटिसिपेशन जवाहरल नेहरू स्टोरी पार्टिसिपेशन जो ना डेभलपमेंट ठीक ठाक होना पार्टिसिपेशन अफ दीपल एंड द मार्केट लिबारेलेशन मार्केट कत लिबारे फर द होल कम्यूनिटी टू एक्सेस इट एंड टू इन इन इट मोर इनकम इनक्रीज वेलिंग रिड्यूस भार्नारेबिलिटी इम्प्रूव फूड सिक्यूरिटी मोर सस्टेनेबल यूज of natural resources base empower uh, empowerment social inclusion chale ei panch ta component amra income jate bere jay manusher nijer je beche thakar khomota ba je bhabe tar jiban cholche sei dhara tar jate unnati hok vulnerability tar kome jak food security tar bere jak and more sustainable use of natural resource jeta ami prothom theke bole aschi panch ta totto jeta natural resource basically jetar upor base kore somosto components has been made in this world sei components gulo ke preserve kora ebong emon bhabe use kora jeta sustainable hoy and future generation er jonno it is available and empowerment social inclusion samajer proti ta byakti mohila hok st hok sc hok every community are involved in this process tale ei उटकमेट कर लगभग उटकमारिच so important component is policies and institutions available which is going to enhance the continuous enhance the capital asset and that is uh, livelihood pentagons that social human natural financial and physical and it will again improve the livelihood outcomes and the uh, livelihood outcomes again give additional input to capital assets so these are the uh, cycle which will continue now here is a addition to this to not only stuck to the when when the livelihood outcomes increase when the livelihood outcome increase there is a option of diversification diversification of livelihoods now how to uh, diversify what are the assets we talked about the five assets continue there are many more assets in these five assets that is labor land livestock wealth many more things are there which comes under broadly this five assets now uh, there is a 
changing in the transforming structure and process structure and process the public sector private sector combination of both and the process settlement policy uh, grassland ecology uh, protection award policy land tenure social security system etc so ei bhabe ami eta ke transforming process ta ke amra increase korbo and that will lead to livelihood diversification that means not only to agriculture activities non agriculture activities also suppose casual labor Uh, wage labor, small business, land rent, subsidies, etc., will come to the diversification. When this diversification will enhance, then automatically the input of uh, uh, in the capital asset of uh, rural uh, rural asset it will increase, and that more diversification will come, and the development process will take place. Now, uh, concept of environment friendly we have discussed in uh, brief. uh now there is a comes under the marketing because when we are talking about the environment friendly it has a additional cost because uh, without concerning to the environment or the component of society when we are uh, making a industry it has a less cost suppose we need we don't need a water treatment plant you can throw uh, directly throw to the river we can uh, Uh, ek, uh, the um, out component, the component of the industry, that is, various kind of chemical, those are very harmful. So, the society can directly chola jabe. Therefore, input cost of production of anything is reduced, but environment is damaged badly. So, uh, there is a input cost increase when we are talking and concerned about the environment. So, eight take a trigger up for a journal. There is a need of some price enhancement. And what is that price environment? By it take a marketing a key of a fit for so price is now. I'm an example. They get a key down fab India. They are telling you every color which is available in fab India. The every uh, dress that is made by natural colors. Though those are not nat uh, natural color, they are not harmful to the. people is keen or people disease or some kind of thing so this is one kind of tag so when we are talking about green product green price and green place and green promotion then automatically we could able to the target of 4p that is the marketing policies policies we can achieve uh, very easily by this environment friendly marketing strategy and also a new market has been already created in the worldwide where this four piece are very important and people are really looking for such kind of um, uh, product which is really environment friendly and people can get benefit out of it now some examples which uh, uh, practically i have worked in the various field of this uh, rural uh, livelihood and how this can be happen suppose one is biogas component biogas is a product of an aerobic uh, Digestion of organic matters of methagonic uh, bacteria. So, ekhane basically uh, this is the picture you could see the tribujan moto je picture taro eche organic waste. There are many organic waste. Those has to be uh, put in a anaerobic uh, digestion system and give a temperature on it in limited temperature. Ekhane theke je waste berobe je energy that will produce a one kind uh, energy. Seta theke electricity. among other kaje asbe among je waste berobe that will also use for the fertilizer and other things fertilizer use korar phole je crop development hobe sekhan theke abar uh, animals er food hisebe byabohar hote pare um, uh, manusher food hisebe byabohar hote pare sekhan theke abar je organic waste berobe that can be input so biogas uh, component is one of the um, important component or examples of the livelihood opportunities through the environment concern ekhane ekta choto video सेंचुरीज Okay, no. Like, 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 like
and large quantities of fuel wood are cut away from the forest. An estimated 240 million tons of fuel wood are burned for cooking every year. Access to forests at no cost has led to widespread degradation. And bad luck is a recurring phenomenon across the country. They were the streets on forests. Scientific studies have focused on biogas as one of the most important renewable energy alternatives. The first family side biogas plant in India was designed in 1946, and more than 17 lakh biogas plants have been set up since the National Project on Biogas Development was launched in 1981. The immediate benefit is a smokeless and healthy cooking environment for women who also no longer undertake tiring journeys in search of fuel wood. The family gets a nutrient rich manure as well, which they can use or sell. The benefits have begun to impress rural people and in some states like Maharashtra, biogas has become an acceptable alternative to traditional biomass fuels. Various governmental and non-governmental organizations work as nodal agencies, while rural entrepreneurs and turnkey workers are directly involved in implementing it at the field level. Biogas technology is now poised to progress beyond just a cooking fuel. In some projects, like here in Karnataka, field research has utilized biogas for street lighting. In this project, the biogas generated electricity has been successfully connected to the main line. Innovations are also being made to make biogas plants available in remote areas. Until now, the cost of transporting construction materials to hilly regions had kept biogas plants a distant reality. Now, rubberized nylon fabric is being used to make light portable models. There is an estimated 260 million cattle population in India. Even if 75% of dung is collected, it could feed about 40 million two cubic meter plants, which could save a thousand million tons equivalent of fuel wood every year. India's forests and its people would certainly benefit from the utilization of such tremendous potential. So uh, this is scheme of Dindya Lupadhai Biogas Yojana was available from long time uh, in our country. And 2000, it has, uh, uh, year 2000, uh, yeah, uh, it was started. But many people have not used. And most of the time it has been seen that it has been returned. The whatever the available, those who are returned uh, to the government of India, the money most of the time has gone back. But recently, I am very ple uh, pleased to inform you that I have recently visited old Agartala, and last three years they have started 123 biogas plant, and uh, it is it is again the Dindal Upadhyay uh, Gram Jyoti Jojana. Still, the scheme is available, but earlier this scheme not only Tipura, most of the states have denied. And one example of there uh, in Maharashtra, Popat Rao, he has uh, the only uh, Pradhan in our country who adopted this scheme. And this scheme basically no one using. So he was able to acquire the all scheme money to his village. And uh, all the household where he started this biogas uh, uh, plant in their household level. It has boosted the economy as well as education level due to study and other benefit and all. So. Uh, this way, this is uh, very beneficial and we have seen that how it could uh, benefit to the uh, rural people also. Is, is PPT is coming? Yes, Hello? sir. Yeah. So, uh, this is one example of biogas. Then uh, again, same types of common types of biofuel. Uh, Jetrofa and other kind of biofuels they are coming up. Now um, it has been planned that in petrol also it is going to mix by 20% to 30% in, 
uh, ethanol and uh, this kind of natural biofuels uh, are going to mix in our country various species it has been started already so uh, another is organic farming we know uh, about the uh, organic farming where we are using the natural available uh, materials on the organic farming there is a person in uh, most probably from andhra pradesh he has uh, started one venture in this and uh, started a very good uh, project so uh, if we have time we can see another video also on this that would be very good i think so is it visible yes sir <laughs> the south indian state of andhra pradesh is home to 54 million people Nearly 30% of them are engaged in agriculture in some form or the other. Over the last five years, this semi-arid state has been witnessing a quiet revolution in farming thanks to this man. It's very low rainfall, so farmers can take usually only one crop in a year. But through natural farming, farmers are able to take crops throughout the year. So that is what we call 365 days green cover. Vijay Kumar is advising the local government on how to become India's first state to practice 100% chemical free agriculture. So usually a farmer takes three to five years to make the transition. So we are already at around uh, 12 to 14 percent of the farmers and farm workers. So in my opinion, we are at a tipping point. Convincing farmers to adopt entirely natural means is not an easy task, but many like Parvati have become Vijay Kumar's frontline soldiers in the battle against chemically reliant farming. She is one of those rare people who is a pioneer in her village. There are about 110 farmers like her in Anantapur. A few simple interventions lead to enormous impacts. By simply rejecting chemical fertilizers for natural alternatives, Parvati yield has increased. So our first intervention was to see that they get out of the chemical. But then we, when we started going deeper into the benefits of natural farming, we realized they, they take less water, even if it didn't rain for three weeks. The crop grown under natural farming was intact. As was the case with many farmers in this region, a few years ago, Parvati's family too was always in debt. Their small earnings were funneled towards paying interest on loans to purchase chemical pesticides and fertilizers. Using that process, we used to spend more than we were earning. So we gave up on farming for five years. Now, every Tuesday, Parvati and her husband take the time to make about 100 kilos of natural fertilizer. We take two liters of neem juice, add cow dung, cow urine and water, then we let it rest for 24 hours. The fertilizer is made entirely from products that are readily available on Parvati's fields. You have to really mix it well. This natural concoction has even given Parvati an additional source of income. I've started selling the excess fertilizer. Once the mixture is ready, it's time to spread it in the fields and wait for the magic to happen. Having learned the simple technique, Parvati has also been enlisted to stand as an example for others in the community. A year ago, she started a community kitchen garden with other women farmers, which supplies vegetables to the local school and to other villagers. With this little kitchen garden, we found a new way of saving. Now we don't have to buy vegetables. Parvati's example also made it clear that the financial benefits of these new methods must be explained by the state to farmers like her. In order to do that, Vijay Kumar has organized a training session aimed at women. Those who have joined the government's zero-budget natural farming program have seen an increase in their income. 
For Vijay Kumar, these sessions are an important step, and women farmers in particular can help transform things. These are the leaders of the women self-help group, and uh, they have a very important role in convincing members to change their behavior. And here, yeah, it's not a question of buying something and doing it fast. It is learning how to do, how to practice agriculture in harmony with nature. And just like that, one farmer at a time, this revolution in agriculture is taking root in Andhra Pradesh. By 2024, the state estimates that 6 million farmers and 8 million hectares of land will be 100% chemical free. <laughs> So, uh, talking about this uh, organic farming. Now, uh, this is the time. Oh, in the act minute. Act minute. Huh. Okay. Krishna Loki, man, wait. Mute kora Yes. 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 Sir, kore ji. So, amra jeta deklam ki ekhon everyone, most of us, we know ki organic farming is good, but how to a convenience of Sir, I think your mic is mute. Sir, you are not audible. Orvin, to be mute, I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. About a mute. About mute. No, I want to unmute. That's it. So I have to know. I want to know, sir. So I have to know. Okay, okay, okay. Continue, 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 please. Uh, presentation that I have to say, PPD, yes, 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 yes. So, I'm ready to bolshilam ki at home. I'm ready to dex shilam ki organic farming, uh, ki bhabe hobe set up the game. Manus, uh, still people are stage of convincing people want to use. Suppose in urban area, in rural area, so I chai ki amra organic farming, uh, bevar kote chai, but organic farmer produce kate chai. Kinto convincing a farmer. That is very difficult. A process that you know, a video to choose for a film that the actor farmer K that grammy gay convince Kora and that is the main important role among the other country economic difference but profit margin to evaluate for a decano that is very crucial that a process and mother may have a example they can there is a huge need of in our country convincing people. Among uh, it all possible now that a recent trend will check 100% we cannot go for organic farming. So, mixing of this organic farming with the chemical, also there is a little bit requirement of chemical fertilizer that we also have to look into because the Sikkim is one of the state which has first declared that organic whole organic farm state, but uh, slowly it has been realized that 100% organic. It is it is not possible in this present era due to some pest. There are many pests uh, in the during uh, last uh, 50 years has been developed, which are basically uh, not possible to uh, uh, damage them by this organic uh, product. So there is a need some pesticides also. But what extent 60 to 70 percent organic? Uh, farming process and 20 to 30 percent where it is necessary to utilize the chemical. This combination is very important in nowadays and for that a, a, a farmer has to ready and we have to convince them in a various way. So uh, this is the process which he has convinced. Many other process can be followed up by the practicing, by the small holding, by the economic swings and other things. So this is very important part. Another uh, example is natural dye. 
we know there are various kind of natural hubs are available in our country and tripura is one of the state where uh, basically whole northeast but the various kind of natural hubs are available this those can give various kind of color but uh, still there is a need to identify them and proper utilize for them for the development of the uh, natural dye so uh, there are many examples because i i work in so those kind of many uh, industries uh, for their development doing their uh, how to develop there are very small small examples suppose a iron and a jaggery combine and keep it for two days and they can make a black color uh, suppose there are many flowers which were temple they are using after that ganda uh, 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 phool or other any flower they can use for various kind of colors and all and to identify them and utilize this proper for natural resources and this was i was talking about the fab india fab india is basically one of the brand which is doing completely on the coloring on the basis of natural dye and there is a process of natural pakka kibhabe a color ta ke ar jano na chhare tar jonno there is a banana stem banana stem er je ota ke jodi high high temperature ar yete melting kora hoy pressure hoy tar phole je juice ber secretion ber sei secretion ta ke moddhe jodi ei dye gulo ke rakha hoy tahole color ar kono din i chhabe na tahole jeta amra dekhi ke natural dye er color gulo sadharonoto chhere jay but naturally there are many things available which can make it fix the color can be fixed not only the chemical so naturally those things need to be explored and Uh, has to be utilized for the environment friendly technology and the development and we all know vermi compost in tripura university also there is a unit of vermi compost where the organic waste uh, eaten by the uh, earthworms and their excreta it become the vermi compost so क्वानिटी क्वालिटी अब दर्मि कम्पोस्ट हुई वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग एंड हाउ स्पीड Uh, of the organic component become the vermi compost unit so uh, in order that i have shall i have time can i show another video of vermi compost hello yes sir yes sir sure sir so uh, it's coming now this vermi compost micro unit at bamutia kal are you visible is it visible yes, 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 yes. Good. The university of Tripura was set up by two educated youth under the banner of Nagar Bamboo Growers, with training and material support from the Centre for Forest Based Livelihoods and Extension. Vermi composting is the simple process where special earthworms are used to turn organic waste into high quality compost. The raw materials required for vermi compost are readily available in the rural areas. and the process doesn't take much effort the group is making good profit through this business and plans to start it on a commercial scale now hamari sikri ki taraf se central forest livelihood extension ki taraf se sahayata mili hai bhumi compost banane ke liye jo hamare gaon mein bahut sari raw materials hai jaise ki gobar aur sabzi wagaira ki jo waste material hai उसी से बनाते हैं हम लोग तो इस मटेरियल के साथ हम जो हमारा जो मानी एक्स्ट्रा मानी इनकम का जो एक्स्ट्रा मानी इनकम साइड जो मिल रहा है तो हम इसी हमारा फायदा हो रहा है तो हम देखा देखा गया अच्छे से हम लोग मन करते हैं जो वो धार्मिक कंपोस्ट धार्मिक कंपोस्ट के हम लोग विक्रय करते हैं जहां व्यक्ति से हम लोग भावल लाभ होगा और साथ में हम लोग मार्केट मार्केट में जो आसे ये चाहिदा मुकाम के आसे भविष्यवेलपमेंट and has now developed low cost vermicomposting technology 
The primary objective of the project was to help rural youth set up micro-enterprises and also improve crop productivity by increasing soil fertility. The center conducts training programs following which they provide the members with financial help for setting up low-cost vermicompost unit. Each unit can produce an approximate quantity of around 400 to 450 kilogram of vermicompost every 45 to 60 days. The farmers have uh, uh, observed it very easy kind of uh, activity where they use their own resources like uh, all household, household waste, that is vegetable waste, natural waste, and their home estate. They use cow dunks, they use their own uh, uh, banana trees, banana leaves. So the villagers have uh, really. Uh, find it very um, comfortable and uh, there is no technical complication also and uh, presently uh, we have also developed uh, market linkage for their uh, this product. A number of such training programs are being conducted to empower the youth in the northeast and help them earn a livelihood. Many youth in the region are now taking up self-help ventures through which they have succeeded in transforming their lives and that of those around them. So, uh, is it audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, so it's a technological barber problem. No, it's okay, it's fine. So, uh, this was the another example. So, there are many uh, uh, component which I, which we can use for uh, environment friendly livelihood option such like as biocomposting there is the whatever the waste we are having here household level we can compose them there is a technology is called nadip component uh, nadip biocomposting technology this basically uh, loss of carbon dioxide and water vapor reduces the weight of the initial dry organic matter thus composing reduce both the volume and mass of the organic matter. So this is called Nadim uh, technology of uh, biocomposting. So there are many uh, technology and we know there is another very popular handmade paper. Handmade paper is sheet of paper made individually by the hands using a mold and, and decal. The mold is framed covered with a flat rigid screen or flexible screen and decal is a flat frame based on cover and mold to contain the runoff of wet pulp. The handmade paper, the layer uh, scent wine fibers held together by the natural internal bonding properties of the cellulose fiber lifted by hand, seed by seed on the modules in suspense and fibers in water with or without seizing. So such time of technology, it cannot be explained in the uh, verbal mode, but through this photograph uh, right side uh, available, we can see uh, that this kind of seeds and coming up and, and the handmade paper, the waste, whatever the waste we are having, that is sugarcane waste, bark fibers, waste paper, jute waste, whatever the waste uh, materials, organic waste materials are available, those basically can be used for the uh, uh, handmade paper units. And then um, contribute the inclusive uh, local growth in the five ways it can be contributed, which improving agriculture productivity, increasing private investment in clean technology and green resources, increase income for the rural poor through green value chain and markets, increase record return on investment through improved ecosystem services in the uh, aquaculture, fisheries and infrastructure in the flood prone region. And the reducing the economic cost cost from natural disaster by strengthening local uh, uh, resiliences. So uh, another uh, component and that is called converging water quality, biocomposting. Biocomposting. Yeah, uh, biocomposting. Uh, biocomposting. component technology kotha uh -huh. Or it a handmade paper er, uh, side. এটা আমরা component বলছি five component যেটা থেকে local growth যে five component এর উপর base করে এসছে সেটা হচ্ছে converging water quality quality quantity to increase water use efficiency in agriculture construction and drinking water and by reducing the pollutant load in the sanitation waste improving vegetation vegetation cover and biodiversity are reducing soil erosion and increase soil carbon so this is the environment and the society help. 
uh, will help make public expenditure work effective over the medium term in five ways. It is a public or suppose like as uh, engineering kind of schemes. Second, a component can uh, create a very good uh, kind of assets for the rural uh, livelihood. And whenever we mix such kind of suppose pond, jonno, kukur kata, ba organic uh, fertilizer, thori kora, a kano jodi amra, a use kote pari such like as engineering or any public works uh, activity, it also boosts the uh, activity of the society. And also uh, it reducing the impact of drought through water harvesting, resilient cropping and secure drinking water and fodder supply. It also secure reducing the impact of uh, flood through uh, better drainage resilience and crop and flood, uh, flood resilient system for the drinking water and sanitation services. Reducing the disease burden through safe disposal of sanitation, waste and water contamination, cleaner habitats and less use of chemical fertilizer. Conserving biodiversity and protecting substances uh, resources for the rural poor, including health and shelter inputs and productivity resources, including fiber, dyes, oil and resins. So these are a uh, few I have jot down over here from the various angle of uh, environment friendly rural livelihood examples. But these are not the limited. There are many more. It cannot be. Um, finish off the all examples in one session, but a overall glimpse how uh, these environment friendly technologies can be uh, overall develop the rural area. Um, so uh, this is this was my last slide, but I'm again uh, going through first uh, to have you look all slides together. So any questions comes in mind, you can uh, put in front of me because many times the slides are not visible or something like that. If any place you want to stop me, please let me know. rural development, the background of rural development issues, the approaches of rural development, the top-down approach, the bottom-up uh, approach, then livelihood concept and theoretical aspects, and how uh, society, economic, and environment together work for the rural development, the livelihood pentagons, and the uh, sustainable livelihood approach, what are the approach and how it can be achieved and um, uh, to achieve what could be the diversification of the livelihood options are available um, uh, the concept of environment and how uh, it can goes on uh, like this environment friendly marketing and then four p's and then examples of uh, uh, environment friendly technologies such like as biogas biofuel organic farming natural dyes vermicomposting biocomposting handmade paper and uh, the outcome, what basically we can achieve through this, the environment friendly technology center and five ways to achieve such kind of things. So these are all. Thank you. If any question and query, please let me know. Wonderful. Wonderful. What a better way than to finish off with uh, nature and natural issues. Uh, students, participants, please feel free. I see Shubhra Dash raising a hand. Shubhrato, would you like to ask something? Yes, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, just a minute. Sir, Others also feel free to write your questions. If uh, you want, you can write your questions in the chat box also. Sir? Hello? Yes, please. Please. Bolo, bolo, bolo. Hey, our area of the land is used to use the land. Hey. জমিগুলোতে একটা সময় চাষ হতো এখন ডে বাই ডে ওখানকার ফসলগুলো সব মানে কমে যাচ্ছে তো আমরা কি ওই জমিগুলোতে আবার অর্গানিক ফার্মিং এ মানে যেতে পারি ওখানে ওই জমিগুলোতে অ্যাকচুয়ালি ফসল কমার মেইন কারণ যেটা হচ্ছে সেটা হচ্ছে আমরা মাল্টি ক্রপিং এ যাচ্ছি না একই ধরনের ক্রপে পড়ে থাকছে হচ্ছে মানে মিক্স করতে হবে আর কি মডার্ন যে ফার্মিং সিস্টেম আছে নট অনলি অর্গানিক ফার্মিং सपोज এই বছর দু বছর যদি রাইস নিয়েছি তাহলে এক বছর কি আমরা ডাল জাতীয় বা এই জাতীয় কোনো প্রোডাক্ট maybe uh, ahar dal but something other kind of dal varieties of crop amra nichi kina amra continuous ekta mathe jeta hoy sei production dai continue kori tar phole eki dhoroner nutrient sob gacher kintu nutrient different different dorkar tar phole ora eki dhoroner nutrient continuous nite thake mati theke ebong shebhabe amra or jonno je 
দরকার অর্গানিক সেটাও অ্যাড করতে পারি না তার ফলে সয়েলের স্ট্রেংথ মনে হয় কমে যায় কিন্তু আমরা যদি মাল্টি ক্রপ মানে এক দু বছর ধরো ধান হলো তার সঙ্গে যদি নেক্সট ইয়ার যদি মটর বা চানা এই ধরনের কোনো প্রোডাক্ট নিই তাহলে ওই ল্যান্ডের প্রোডাক্টিভিটি সবসময় বেঁচে থাকবে এবং অর্গানিক ফার্মিং তো অবশ্যই ইম্পর্টেন্ট কম্পোনেন্ট যেটা ওটাতে আমরা দিতে পারি যারা ইম্পোর্ট করছে ডেভেলপিং কান্ট্রি বেসিক্যালি যারা পেট্রোল বা এই ধরনের ফুয়েল ইম্পোর্ট করছে বাইরে থেকে সেখানে যদি মিক্স করা যায় পেট্রোল বা ডিজেল ইম্পোর্ট করতে হবে না তো অটোমেটিক আমার কস্টিং কমে যাবে এখন তো কস্টটা বেসিক্যালি হাই ডিউ টু এভরিথিং উই আর ইম্পোর্টিং লেস এক্সপোর্ট করছি যা এক্সপোর্ট করি আমাদের দেশ থেকে তার থেকে অনেক কম জিনিস আমরা অনেক বেশি জিনিস আমরা ইম্পোর্ট করে থাকি তো যদি এই ধরনের ফুয়েলে আমরা ইম্পোর্ট কমাতে পারি বেস্ট অন বায়ো ফুয়েল হ্যাঁ তাহলে অটোমেটিকলি এটা হবে এবং ইথানল মিক্স শুরু হয়ে গেছে অনেক জায়গায় ইথানল টাইপের কম্পোনেন্ট মিক্স ভারতবর্ষের মধ্যেই শুরু হয়ে গেছে এবং সাম প্লেসেস ইন আন্ধ্রপ্রদেশ দ্যাট জেট্রোফা ফুয়েল ও মিক্সিং শুরু হয়েছে তার ভিতরে একটা ভিডিও ছিল ভার্মি কম্পোস্টের উপর ত্রিপুরার সেইখানে ওই ভিডিওর ভেতরে মানে আমি আমার একজন পুরনো বন্ধু যিনি মারা গেছেন গত বছর কোভিডে তাকে দেখলাম এই ভদ্রলোক ডক্টর পি কে কৌশিক উনি সেন্টার ফর লাইভলিহুড এর সি এফ এল ই যেটারও ছবি দেখিয়েছে ওই ভিডিওটার ভেতরেই সেটা ডিরেক্টর ছিলেন রিজিয়নাল ডিরেক্টর ছিলেন দিস পার্সন দিস পার্সন ওয়াজ সো মানে এফেক্টিভ ইন দিস এক্সটেনশন অ্যাক্টিভিটিস পার্টিকুলারলি এই নেচার বেসড মানে এনভায়রনমেন্ট ফ্রেন্ডলি ইন্টারভেনশনের জন্য অ্যান্ড উই রিয়েলি he was a man from chatisgarh but he had such a huge impact in the life of lot of people in tripura in rural tripura in particular relating to lot of forestry and uh, bio resources but uh, hats off to this person really he, this person uh, should have lived much more longer and uh, really when i was looking for the videos of for tripura basically mm. uh, i was looking for and surprisingly this was only found there there are many things happened suppose old agartala myself has seen many mm. biogas plant 123 in last 3 years is a huge for a village mm. but uh, we, don't have, we don't have a video or such a document no, this, this this documentation is a big problem because i yes. remember when i was in class 3 that mm. was in 1982 okay even uh, forget the students i think you were also not born uh, but what happened uh, the first biogas plant in tripura was set up in 1982 at yes. arkenagor farm cattle farm okay but yes. the point is we could not utilize it yes 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 that is the point now technology came but it's improper utilization kept us in such a bad bad shape yes that's the thing yeah. and in this way if you see search the popad rao video maharashtra biogas utilization many videos yeah. are available the right. large number of videos are available but we don't have a single uh, because i wanted to show the examples from here itself so that could uh, for the it. for the students documentation itself can be a livelihood enhancement opportunity and suppose okay. the compost unit in our tipura university hmm. still we don't have such a document to right. show that is documentation itself can boost livelihood opportunities for the young boys and girls absolutely it will okay yeah uh, arvin there is one more question in the chat box yes uh, can he ask or shall i uh, mesaka can you just repeat the question uh, sir is biofuel production budget friendly for the rural areas 
Yes, uh, uh, I would like to give one example of uh, uh, my life. Uh, okay, I was working in a development alternative. It's a Tara wing. So all India, basically, whatever the now the biofuel uh, chambers available, that's made up by Tara in India first. It was invented by IUCN chairman uh, Asok Khosla, who has uh, started in our country uh, this activity first. So I was with him and working on this biofuel, uh, one of the technology of a biofuel. And in the Bundelkhand area, basically, if you see, there is a huge quantity of biomass available. And it's a natural biomass, not like a Jetropha biofuel or uh, our other kind of biofuels are available. So there was huge biomass available and those were can be easily converted to um, your uh, biofuel activity through a process of chamber. So uh, what he has done, he, he said ki, uh, if you could uh, bring about 50 kg per kg, we will pay you 2 rupees. So in the villagers, in that time, uh, 2 kg, 50 kg they are bringing, 100 rupees was the minimum wage rate that time, 75 or 80 rupees. So they were getting 100 rupees and the whole the biomass which was bulkly available on those area, the people were getting livelihood because they were able to earn per day 200 rupees, 300 rupees sometimes when the wage rate was 100 only. So two, three hundred rupees they were earning and the biofuel machine was running uh, in that way. And the whole the Tara campus uh, was uh, getting the fuel activity or energy conversion also from that was from this uh, biomass available. So such kind of there are various kind of available and naturally available, which is basically not a forest, but it is utilizing the uh, resources of the earth resources as well as consuming the water and develop in a natural way. So those need to be uh, incorporated in the biofuel as well as in the biomass. Then only the development can take place and it is really viable in that way I have seen because the large number of people were getting the income generation 2 to 300 rupees per day um, generation. Now it, it has a value around 1000 or 2000 rupees. So if a wage rate is 1000 rupees, it's more than enough uh, for the rural area. 1000 rupees wage rate is getting, it's a very difficult nowadays also. So if uh, this is this is the process basically, what is available in which area and that has to be used for the particular energy and as well as fuel purpose that has to be evaluated and because india is a country where it's a very diverse and one technology cannot suit to everywhere so everywhere there is a need some such kind of innovation or incorporation then only it is viable it doesn't mean can that uh, the jetrofa will be viable in tipura may not viable but i have seen hyderabad it's very viable because there are huge barren land and this, those lands cannot produce any crops and other things because water, water and other things very scarce city and uh, land is very terrain kind of um, um, land. There is less water available. So those areas, Jetropa is very good. But Tipura is a uh, land is very fertile. So in that area, maybe uh, better than Jetropa, other kind of plants can be. Uh, and getting here, suppose like as rubber, we are doing here, any other of vegetables can be grow here and the climate condition is very good. But where the uh, semi-arid regions, those are basically uh, very good for Jetropa, some kind of things, biomass. So these are. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Do we have any other queries? Uh, Aurobindo sir uh, is always available in the campus, but still I will request him to just share his uh, email ID uh, in the chat box so that in case any of the students feel they can write to him. Okay. It's very simple. If you, you can just remember, okay, probably one of the shortest uh, email IDs uh, in the campus. And uh, I am also sharing. Uh, yeah, I have a request. Please share your PPT. I'll share absolutely. I have shared my uh, mobile number. That is basically WhatsApp number only for WhatsApp. Okay. 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 So, uh, you can't get me over phone or in this number, but you can WhatsApp me if any queries or anything related. Want to uh, develop in rural area in any way? One, wonderful. Interested, interested. So I'll be absolutely join with you hands together for this purpose. Okay. 
you would like to see the bio we can go sometimes some slightest like pen can be make up okay thank you one uh, thank you uh, wonderful uh, students participants do you have any other queries thank you thank you dr arvind mahato head of the department rural studies tripura university for sharing your time and uh, being the resource person for this session uh, i on behalf of the department of economics and on my personal behalf thank you so much and um, uh, i believe in future endeavors also will be getting you as yes. part of our efforts and uh, students participants uh, this was the last technical session Uh, so as i said we started uh, with a person from vishwa bharati and we are uh, winding up with a person from vishwa bharati obviously you can say that's a bias from me but can't help uh, but i believe it was a very enriching experience for all of you and uh, thank you arvind once again so thank you